Hate to say it, but Arsenal are serious. Uh, the win against Brentford was ugly. It was a little bit dry, a little bit slow, but it was a clean sheet. It was three points on the board, and it was a side that looked like it had a lot of camaraderie, a lot of team spirit. And I think that's what you need to win the Premier League. And I think that went missing for Arsenal at the back end of last season. It wasn't about their quality. It wasn't about saying Odegaard's one of the best playmakers in the league. It wasn't saying about Saka being able to get you a goal, Martinelli. I actually think Arsenal's spirit and, and ability to grind through results got really, really poor, really, really weak and, and porous in the back end of last season. So the result against Brentford, I think, shows a lot about why Arsenal are a serious, serious outfit this season. In this video, we'll break down some of the observations I made from the game uh, and why I think Arsenal really are a big side uh, in the Premier League title race this season. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. For my overview was, again, this is like the kind of performance you need to put out in March, in April. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think Arsenal have peaked yet. I don't think they're playing ex incredibly expansive football, beautiful football, aesthetic football. They did that at the start of last season and they tailed off and they didn't know what to do when sides put everyone behind the ball because sides at the back end of the season all need to get something. They're all trying to scrape draws, scrape wins to not get relegated, to fight for European positions. So it's all well and good. Start of the season, you blow sides away, you play beautiful football like Arsenal have done for, for basically decades now. But that little bit of grit that Arsenal needed, it didn't quite show up against the Southamptons of the world, the Brightons, the West Hams, the Liverpools. Those results cost Arsenal the league. That's the reality. The start of the season, what have we seen? We've seen Arsenal play four centre-backs at points. We've seen Arsenal play midfielders that don't move the ball particularly quickly. I'm not talking about Declan Rice. He's the, the exception to that statement. Uh, you have to look at it and say... Declan Rice has been an absolute marvel, but Jorginho's still a little bit of an issue. Havertz is definitely an issue, even though he's good against Brentford. So this Arsenal side have started off the season very, very slow. Uh, again, moving the ball pretty slowly, just grinding through games. And I, I think eventually, when a couple of these signings settle in, uh, I think they'll turn into a side that will blow sides away. They will show their quality, their prowess. I think Jesus is a lot more for him to, to expand into. I think Saka could improve. I don't think he was particularly good against Brentford. And similarly with Martinelli, Trossard. These are four attackers that could all be aiming to get 15, 20 goals in all competitions uh, each. So Arsenal have got that kind of headroom to expand into. But at the moment, I have to talk about my favourite player for Arsenal. A player that I wish City had signed desperately. And that's Declan Rice. He is the reason I think Arsenal won against Brentford. It's as simple as that. He was able to drive Arsenal with the ball. He was able to link up play first time. There was a moment where the ball gets cleared from Brentford. And it's in the, it's in the middle of the park. He's getting pressured by, I think it's Norgard. A few other Brentford players kind of pressing him. And the ball comes out of the sky and he first time touches it into Odegaard, I think it is. Uh, if you're an Arsenal fan, you remember that moment, let me know. I'm pretty sure it was Odegaard, but he basically volley, he volley passes it first time into Odegaard. He just, he moved the ball so quickly. And I just thought that was a great example of what Rice brings this side. Yes, he brings leadership. Yes, he brings physicality. But the reality is he moves the ball so quick that it kind of bypasses a few of these other players who I don't think are having the best season. I think Odegaard in particular is another one. When you look at a player with a bit of creative flair that can do something unique, something different, that can score from long range, that can open a back line up very easily, like a knife cutting through butter. We saw that with Odegaard last season. He was arguably the best playmaker in the league last season. Have we seen it this season? No, we haven't. I don't think we have. He's got a lot of room to fill. He's got a lot of space to expand into. And that's the point of this video is to say that you know, Arsenal are serious because they're starting the season in the right way. They're picking up near near enough maximum points early on in the season. In in February, March, April, maybe their fate in the Champions League has been decided. Maybe they get knocked out early. Maybe they go deep and they get even more confidence from that. <laughs> they're not in the uh, League Cup uh, as well. So come February, March, April, that kind of run of games where it becomes never-ending... Um, until you know you, you end up in May and it's the end of the Premier League title race. 
that's when Arsenal could have all those players that I've just mentioned get into that kind of form that we saw at the start of last season where they're blowing sides away 3-4-0. Um, I think Odegaard is one of those players that can definitely improve. Uh, and, and the front three for me still, I, look, Jesus has scored four goals in all competitions, I think, this season for Arsenal. It's not, it's not groundbreaking stuff. If that front three clicks, I still think Arteta has to find out who that front three is. Is it Trossard? Uh, is it Trossard, Saka, Martinelli with Jesus coming in and out? Is it Jesus, Saka, Martinelli? I think Trossard offers something completely different to Jesus. But I think between Trossard and Jesus, there's there's a mixture of form. There's a, a mixture of confidence. I think when one doesn't play, they, they, they drop confidence a lot. So you end up having this kind of half-rate selection where you don't have two world-class strikers. I think you've got two 7 out of 10 strikers. So that's not ideal in terms of getting past difficult defences. But the big one for me, look, Brentford away, hard. They could have easily uh, conceded. Aaron Ramsdale looked very, very nervous. But they are papering over the cracks because they got a clean sheet. They got a win. I thought Saliba was absolutely electric against Brentford. He was so calm, so assured. If they can rotate him at the right moments throughout the season, uh, in the business end of the season, where he plays those big games, I think Arteta has to take a lot of... Um, he has to take a lot of his experience from Guardiola. What would Guardiola, what would Guardiola do in this situation? I think he'd he'd find a way of resting Saliba just after the Christmas period. Maybe they bring in a centre back. Maybe get a bit more out of Kirior, for example. Um, it's a shame about Timber obviously being injured. But then, so that that February March April run in Saliba's fully fit. Because Ruben Diaz had a similar experience last season. Ruben Diaz at points couldn't get a game. It'd always be a Kanji and, and John Stones and Ake playing football. And then Diaz had this incredible run where obviously City went on to win the Champions League. I think Saliba needs that little bit of running as well. Um, yesterday, I thought Aaron Ramsdale was really poor. Uh, he made Arsenal look very, very nervous. But again, I, to be a, a glass half full kind of guy, I think if this situation is an issue now, which I think it certainly is. I think Arsenal, the the what the, you know, the point of this video, the title of this video, Arsenal is serious. I think they're serious throughout their side. I think Odegaard, Rice, all these players have got Saka. They've all got a point to prove. But so does Ramsdale. And so does Raya. I think Raya is number one. I think he's the best keeper. I think Arsenal will be a serious Premier League title um, contender if they can settle this dispute right now. And I actually think Ramsdale... Didn't cover himself in glory. Even shots that went down, it went straight down him. You know, straight towards him. He looked nervous. He looked a little bit unsure. So I think if Arsenal can cement over that issue, I think just keep David Rea, get him confident, play play Ramsdale in the FA Cup, in maybe in the final few games in the Champions League group stages. Just keep on the straight and narrow with Rea. Get a bit of form into Saliba in the in the crucial period. And then you're getting goals out of Havertz out of nowhere. Suddenly he he's having an uptake in form. Jesus can only get better. Saka, Martinelli, etc. Arsenal looks serious. I think Brentford, despite it not being a glamorous win against a, a really difficult side, it was a really, really important result for Arsenal. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you very, very soon.